because of the past comment. Right? But anyway, he, she, she, she is wise and she be, uh, finally, of course, met the Buddha and uh, through the Buddha's teaching, uh, she re reflected yeah, on aging. Yeah? And that's how later she also attained uh, uh, awakening. Right? So the story is, of course, about uh, Bapali. Uh, and the Buddha came over this side at one time. She uh, offered yeah, uh, the dana to the Buddha. And uh, the Chawai Prince, they too would like to invite the Buddha. Yeah? And they came to Amapali, yeah. They said they cut, you know, because Amapali is very rich. And uh, the Chawai Prince came cut to cut side to the side and asked Amapali, you know. And Amapali uh, uh, said that uh, she already offered, you know, the dana to the Buddha. And they they want to exchange that and ask Amapali, how much do you want? Yeah, thinking that it's like a person, how much do you want? And the Buddha said priceless. I mean, the Amapali said priceless. Nobody can yeah, buy that offering of dana to the Buddha. Right? So, uh, mango group, Amba, Amba means mango. No? This place was uh, offered to the Buddha and the Sangha. When they come here, uh, they recite here for uh, their journey, uh, their practice. Yeah? This is also the place where uh, they buy 100 uh, uh, second ladies, much, yeah, and uh, if you track from uh, Kapilavastu, uh, then led by Mahapajavati Gautami, they came all the way, yeah, walking, uh, now we call it about 300 kilometers, and you can imagine maybe how many days they spent on foot, and uh, when their expression of uh, saying that they were very haggard, tired, exhausted, yeah, so you can imagine they had to go through swamp, dusty uh, road, and uh, non-stop, yeah, walking. And uh, food-wise, maybe very little. They only probably had to bring along some dry food, maybe dry chapati, and along the way, just take enough to come. Yeah? So hungry, tired, exhausted, yeah. Just to ask for coordination. At that time, we know that uh, Mahapajapati already a Sotapanna. Right? And remember in Negroda Park? Right? So, those were the days uh, for the female to break through the social sanction yeah, during that time. Uh, they break through the history in. The, world. the earliest record of women okay, that is allowed to actually take spirituality okay, and also the social sanction. So this, these are the things that uh, when one has conviction yeah, for the truth, I think everything is possible. Okay. So it's only patient, okay, endurance, and uh, the confidence yeah, to, uh, to ask permission. Yeah? And uh, that's how it happened here. And at the end, of course, um, the Buddha's uh, answer to their uh, request yeah? uh, finally is being uh, permitted. And uh, the Buddha, of course, in considering the condition of that time. Of course, a lot of uh, uh, aspects needs to be taken care of, yeah? And this is where we know that, of course, uh, when Dharabha Ananda asks, yeah, on behalf, yeah? So, key thing is, of course, the Buddha do not want to uh, start the things by just because he says so, yeah? But also, when Dharabha Ananda asks, and that's how uh, it is important to know that it's not the Buddha just one with gender equality, but it is true that women can attain enlightenment. Yeah? And that needs also others to uh, come together to understand that. 
Yeah, so this is a greater track too. For we know that during Buddha's time, status is a challenge, gender is a challenge, and many other aspects yeah, that bring about a cycle of suffering. So it is in this place where we sit, where we can imagine uh, Anur Kajapati, Gautami, uh, was ordained. Yeah? Ordination is based on uh, eight principles. Yeah? Uh, a lot of people do not understand how the Pikuni was ordained. Yeah? Uh, for the first one, yeah? uh, Mahapajapati Gautami, uh, she was ordained just by accepting the eight principles uh, of uh, respect. Yeah? And so nowadays, uh, a lot of Confucians still have uh, in uh, the air. Uh, but I think as a Dharma seeker, as a practitioner, we should understand it clearly. Yeah? Uh, it is in this very place too, uh, we say the Buddha has permitted yeah, uh, Mahapajapati Gautami uh, to enter into the Sangha and she is the foremost, yeah, the most senior in uh, becoming the first Bikuni yeah, in a large uh, congregation. Yeah. So the eight principles simply is number one to be uh, respectful yeah, to the Bikuni because the Buddha is also a Bikuni. Yeah. And uh, the reason being is we know that because she is mother to the Buddha, and uh, she is from the royal family. So uh, this guideline, this principle is important, so that, uh, you know, a lot of us, we tend to carry our habit, right? Even as a mother, right? I still remember why this rule uh, should come, yeah? I still remember my own mother. After I become a nun, and sometimes she meet me, she will ask me, have you taken your bath? <laughs> If you do this, I you do that, right? Until one day I tell mom, uh, you know, uh, you still think that I need to be reminded, but I think, you know, I've uh, gone through that and I think, you know, do not worry and uh, do not have to ask, yeah? And then since then, she don't ask anymore, right? So you can imagine because uh, Mahapajapati Gautami is the mother, yeah, of uh, the Buddha, and so therefore, you know, there will be tendency as a mother, as a queen, she will exercise her that power, right? So in order not to, the Buddha set the principle, first one, to be respectful, yeah, to the bhikkhu, even if they are one day uh, or day, yeah. So that is to say that uh, always. Uh, means not to be um, uh, showed superiority yeah, over the people. Yeah? So the respect has to be there. Yeah? And, uh, so that's the first. Second, of course, other rules that comes is basically, um, uh, can we say, some are actually appear in a Patimukha. Yeah? Like for example, about Wasa. Yeah? About Wasa, then means the Bikuni have to stay in area that is monk because Indian being India yeah even until today uh, the cases of uh, rape is very high so therefore for the safety of the economy then you know it's a principle or rule that they have to stay nearby uh, monk monastery yeah? so that the monk can at least protect so it's not because when the Buddha say uh, don't say so not because the Buddha reject Directly. The reason and condition that the Buddha see not the time yet, but it will come because when the Buddha was enlightened, he already had the vision to establish the four four assembly, but it's only when, right? So at a time, of course, after he uh, give this uh, eight condition, uh, the other condition, of course, is uh, if uh, the Nuns, uh, if they uh, do their wasa, they have to uh, new moon, full moon, they have to ask the date for Uvada, teaching from the people. Uh, and also, if they have uh, wasa, 
uh, they also have to ask for uh, Anyata means if they have done anything wrong, they have to ask uh, the kind of uh, parents yeah, from both sides, the Bikini and the Bikku. And others, they said maybe later, yeah, uh, because uh, during Mahapajapati Katanis or ordination in the sense of given the uh, there's no six samana means training yeah? but in that six rule is questionable people say because uh, already mentioned about uh, six samana that uh, when they are ordained they have to go to both Bhikkhu and Bhikkhu Nisanga which because Mahapajapati is the first yeah? there's no six samana yet but that rules is there so most scholar have a little bit of question mark there right? and uh, then others is that uh, the bhikkhuni should not uh, abuse or revile the bhikkhu and the it is uh, bhikkhuni should not admonish bhikkhu even if they are they've done wrong uh, whatever the bhikkhuni should not admonish them right so those are the eight principles uh, but like I said, some scholars say some of these principles could be a later additional uh, the add on to that. Yeah? And Venerable Ananda was asked to uh, say to us, Mahapajabhati uh, Gautami, if she agreed to accept, then uh, she would be able to take you know, the Bikuni ordination. So that's how she was ordained. Yeah? And then for the 500 Sakyan lady, uh, the Buddha did not ordain them straight. The Buddha actually allowed the senior bhikkhus uh, to ordain the 500 Sakyan ladies. Uh, so in the Chulavaga, in the Vinaya, they said that uh, the Buddha said, I allow uh, bhikkhu to ordain the bhikkhu. So that statement, that rule stays until today yeah? so in the past because we were in the dark and uh, some people say cannot be ordained actually it's not true it's in the Vinaya the Buddha mentioned that until today it's this thing yeah only we do not know now we know yeah another Chulavaga uh, the Buddha said no, I allow you to ordain yeah I allow you Bhikkhu to ordain Bhikkhu right so with that, of course, uh, the uh, 500 second ladies was ordained, yeah? were ordained as bhikkhunis. So that is the first bhikkhuni sangha that happened here in Vesali, yeah. And they were staying. Actually, I asked Brother Singh to find out uh, nearby, yeah, uh, together, and uh, they were practicing that. And apparently, it was said that uh, Mahapajapati Gotami after one week of uh, ordination, uh, she practiced well and attained uh, arahatship. Okay? So that is for Mahapajapati Gautami uh, Perry. She's foremost in uh, her seniority. And uh, she also has uh, uh, her realization is in Terigata and it's nicely uh, stated. I see whether it's in this phone or not. I read to you and it's quite interesting. So this is in Terigata. We know that Terigata is a poem eh, of the Bhikkhuni. There are 73 poems altogether, uh, all telling the extraordinary character eh, and spirituality of the Bhikkhuni of the past. And this is one that is uh, Terigata 6.6. It's about Mahapajapati Gautami. Uh, a poem is like this, yeah? He said, she said, eh? Buddha, hero, praise be to you, or homage to you, you foremost among all beings, you who have released me from pain or suffering, eh? and so many other beings too. All suffering has been understood. The source of craving has withered. Cessation has been touched by me on the noble Eightfold Path. I've been mother and son before, and brother, brother, grandmother too. Not understanding what was real, 
I flow on without finding peace. But now I've seen the Blessed One. This is my last compounded form. The on-flowing of birth is, has expired. There's no more re-becoming now. See the gathering of followers, putting forth effort, self-control, always with strong resolution. This is how to honor the Buddhas. Surely, for the good of so many, did Maya give birth to Gautama, who burst asunder the mass of pain of those stricken by sickness and death. This is a poem that she read. So we can see that Venerable Mahapajapati Gautami relate to the Buddha and uh, uh, paying her utmost homage to the Buddha for releasing her from suffering. Right? And not only for her, for so many other beings. Yeah? And also, how the suffering is understood. Yeah? Remember the Four Noble Truths? Say all suffering has been understood. Yeah? The three phases of understanding suffering. The source of craving has been the, means the cause of suffering has been eradicated. Cessation has been touched by me. And cessation has been realized. Then on the noble echo path, yeah, fully developed. I've been mother and son before. Apparently, Venerable Mahapajara Pari Gautami Perry, she also uh, has the ability to see her past life. Yeah? I've been mother and son before. And father, brother, grandmother too. So in your life, now you may be somebody to someone that, you know, who knows? Who are you? Today you are female, tomorrow you are male. And uh, sometimes you meet people in your life and uh, sometimes the Buddha say it's so sad. Some people do not know. They marry their grandmother. Yes, because of their attachment. Uh, so you can come in different form, relate to each other in different uh, relation. Yeah? And that's how, sometimes how sad it is and how confused it is. Yeah? So just like the Buddha, when the, you can see the, your past life and many, many lives, you will understand yeah, why suffering has to be stopped. So it is because not understanding what was real. Yeah? I flow on without finding peace. Yeah? So if we don't understand this, then naturally we will go around samsaric cycle. So now I've seen the Blessed One. Yes. She has seen yeah, the awakened one. So she declared, this is my last compounded form. This last for gathering yeah, the form of the body. Yeah. The on feeling of birth has expired. There's no more birth. Birth has ended. There's no more re becoming. Yeah. So Arahans, they were declared. Yeah. Birth is ended. Yeah. What has to be done has been done and the holy life has been perfumed and there is no more really coming. So here also she mentioned when seeing the Buddha's disciple gathering, putting forth effort eh, means to strive on very quickly. Self-control, living a brahmacharya life, always with strong resolution. You know, for Dharma Mahapajapati Gautami and the five, uh, five second ladies, if it's not with their strong determination and resolution, what do you think? Do you think they will be able to get all this? Yeah, and the Buddha really see, yeah, how they struggle and how determined they are. And again and again, yeah, they never give up yeah, to strive. And of course, even after they were ordained, yeah, it's not just like, oh, they are ordained, then no need to practice, right? When they are ordained, they are so happy, and uh, they strive uh, even more diligently. Yeah? So this is where that uh, the Buddha also yeah, praised uh, the Bhikkhuni uh, Sangha. And uh, here at the end, of course, uh, this is how, yeah, whenever Mahapajabali Gautama say, this is how to honor the Buddha. 
uh, as uh, disciples of the Buddha. So the gathering of the followers is to support the Kalena Mita, yeah? support each other, and to strive uh, hippoly, putting right effort and discipline, and then uh, practice well and uh, resolute to attain Nibbana. Yeah? And this is the greatest honor to the Buddha. Yeah? So surely for the good of so many. So she also mentioned about the sister. If Maya gave birth to Gautama, uh, seven days only, uh, she uh, able to see him. Uh, and uh, for this, that we know in the beginning, we know that the Buddha was born and to bring uh, this ease uh, uh, and to end the mass of suffering uh, for all those who are in the cycle of samsara. Uh, so this is uh, how uh, Mahapatapati Gautami uh, praised the Buddha in the Terigata. Right? And also at the same time, uh, we know that at the end of, uh, be before the Buddha attained Mahaparinibbana, uh, Venerable Mahapatapati Gautami and the five Arhantas, uh, Bhikkhuni, they too asked for permission to enter Parinibbana earlier than the Buddha. Right? And at the time we know that when they marched on here, and the Buddha was uh, already, you know, 29, he go forth, 6 years, 35, and then after that, he went back to see them. After the king passed away, he's around uh, maybe 40, and then the, at that time, they march here, uh, they say, Mahapajapati Gautami already about 70 plus. Yeah, when he, she asked for ordination. Right? And then he said that Mahapajapati Gautami lived very long, about 120 years, some say, some traditions say. So, uh, you can imagine, yeah, uh, old but uh, strong in mind. And uh, before her uh, Parinibbana, when we refer Parinibbana, means Mahaparinibbana is only uh, a sign yeah, to the Buddha. The rest we say Parinibbana. So when she asked for uh, permission, they asked permission to attain Parinibbana. Yeah, so means uh, to uh, pass into Parinibbana earlier than the Buddha. So they can view. They can view. Because done is what to be done. No? Right? And uh, the holy life already been lived. Yeah? And uh, during that time, still I think at that time, Still got a man who is, uh, how do I say, doubtful about the attainment of the bhikkhunis. And during that time, the Buddha told, yeah, uh, Mahapachapati Gautama, you know, uh, asked her to uh, perform uh, the, how do I say, the knowledge in the Dhamma. So because she has also uh, some knowledge of, uh, deeper knowledge on the psyche, yeah. Uh, apparently she performed to silence those who are still in doubt. Yeah? So uh, in Apadana, uh, Apadana it was stated, and uh, not only in the Pali side, but in, in, even in the Mahayana side, yeah? the Agama, uh, those Apadana also contain the story of Mahapajapati yeah? So this is not just uh, something like people may say in literature or even today somebody want to say about it. We have all the uh, facts, facts, literature, uh, and uh, allowance that the Buddha gave. So uh, we know that the women suffer 2,600 years ago until today. Still, they are being subject to uh, a lot of uh, discrimination. Even today, we are... Uh, I mean, we talk about technology, we talk about satellite, but it's still on Earth. Yeah, like maybe, I heard, not maybe, it is. In our Christmas Sunday, yeah? now they don't allow the women to go to school, to do a study. Yeah, they go. Yeah. And uh, also, like in Myanmar, yeah, the women, even elected as a president, uh, she's house arrest. Yeah? So we know that uh, this discrimination, even until 21st century, still happened. Yeah? So 
it's not a surprise, yeah. And uh, but we know that the Buddha is great. Yeah? Is the one that transform the women uh, too is able uh, to develop their mind because in the old day women were to be live to only have two finger wisdom which is not true also. Right? So the Buddha has break through a lot of uh, uh, belief system and uh, those false views and all those things. I think that is the greatness of the Buddha. Right? Okay, so here uh, like I say. We are here to embrace uh, this sanctity of this place and to remember yeah, the Buddha completed his fourfold Sangha, the fourfold assembly here with the Bhikkhu and Bhikkhuni Sangha which established in the Sali at this very place and with the 500 uh, second ladies made by Venerable Mahabhajipati Gautami and uh, they have practiced well and uh, apparently all of them too attain the realization of awakening and also it's here that the Buddha again uh, sanctify the importance of taking the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha as the treasure, the jewels because this jewel is incomparable, yeah? priceless um, even uh, the treasure of heavens is not as great as the three jewels eh? And also, and the practice of this jewel, uh, we know that it leads to uh, that freedom yeah? uh, to break through our delusion, uh, the deceit and the confusion or illusion about this body and mind. So today, we are here and we are able to embrace 2,600 years ago, the presence of the Buddha here and the power of the Dhamma and at that time too, the Sadi experienced pandemic, there is also a pandemic in Vasari or in India and uh, during that time, of course, a lot of death, famine, sickness, death and loss, spirit that caused a lot of disturbance and having instruct Garbananda to come and also to recite Akana Sutra and to invoke and also making a vision for the Devas to partake the marriage to assist and apparently, it was said, this big rain and water that wash off all the dead body, the diseases, and later the place was restored, clean, and also the lost spirit of being at peace. And the people in the Sali again be able to find peace this is a very place where the Rakana Sutta was recited and until today this Sutta continue to bring building and freedom and safety by practicing the three jewels making the three jewels Important in one's life, and also by invoking the devas to also partake the marriage, to assist as a human, make offerings to them, and the sharing of marriage with them. So now we were together with a salutation to the triple gem. And also, we recite the Ratana Sutra. So we reflect and invoke the blessings of Peter Jam in this very site. For the Buddha Dharma, the Rosasana, to continue to grow. For the well-being, for the happiness, 
and benefit of the many.